with this Hey, if you're new to the channel and enjoy the content, why not hit the subscribe button and join us? Thank you. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. You're listening to Ethan Van Skyver, 25 year veteran of the comic book industry, great big Star Wars fan, and that is why I am up right now at 10 50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time making a video about Star Wars when I could be sleeping. I could be sleeping or, you know, uh, watching a movie or doing any other thing, but I'm not. I'm monitoring Star Wars news. Uh, this is Matt Martin here from Lucasfilm Story Group. Matt Martin, who looks suspiciously like my old friend Matt Martin. I had to check, and I was like, did Matt Martin get a job with Lucasfilm? Matt Martin used to, uh, he was an artist. He drew a book called Vortex and then Snowman uh, over at Hall of Heroes when I worked there doing Cyberfrog. I was like, that looks just like Matt Martin, but it isn't. It's a different Matt Martin. Believe it or not, there's more than one Matt Martin in the world. All right, so Matt Martin is up on Twitter. He was yesterday. It says one day ago, but people are talking about this now. He says, was trying to avoid posting the Last Jedi stuff this week, but I've already failed, so boom. And then he retweets, this guy, tweet is unavailable. That means that this soy-based uh, monster uh, blocked me on Twitter. Why would you block me? Why would you block me on Twitter? I don't know who you are, but he does. Apparently, this guy does a podcast about Star Wars. Uh, I did go and look. I snuck around his block, and I wanted to see exactly what it was that he tweeted. Uh, he tweeted a picture of Vice Admiral Holdo, Laura Dern. Uh, her probably most infamous role. And she's holding a little gun up, and, you know, she, he, he tweeted, Hey, uh, I'm sick and tired of hearing how everyone hates Vice Admiral Holdo. Not everyone does hate Vice Admiral Holdo. I love her. What exactly do you love about Vice Admiral Holdo, you fool? Uh, and then he says, If you feel the same way I do, retweet this tweet. Uh, and to my surprise, to my shock and dismay, what was 37,000 retweets, uh, probably in no small part due to the fact that Matt Martin, Lucasfilm Story Group uh, guy, fellow, uh, he went ahead and retweeted this tweet. So people are talking about Holdo and how wonderful Holdo is or how controversial she is and having a conversation with Matt Martin. And this gentleman right here says, meh, I don't hate her or The Last Jedi. That means that you do hate her and you hate The Last Jedi or you wouldn't just, you would have said, no, I like her and The Last Jedi. Uh, but I think her actions would have been better through another character. How hilarious would it have been if Admiral Akbar was the one to 9-11 Snoke ship? Admiral Akbar, Boom. See, so get it? It's a Muslim joke. It's a, it's a, right, it's a Muslim joke. Yeah. Uh, a little, a little uh, politically incorrect, but amusing. Matt Martin responds, The problem with Akbar is that the audience, and Poe, parenthetically, would automatically trust him. Everyone trusts a fish-faced fool. That says it's a trap. Everyone trusts that guy. They like his be his big gigantic glassy eyes. Uh, it needed to be a new character whose agenda and motivation was unclear. If it was Akbar, Poe would have by the way, garbage tier, Akbar Poe, comma, Poe would have instantly trusted him. Uh, although it's a trap motherfucker would have been a great final line before the boom. Wrong, uh this would have been a better joke, honestly. But it would have pissed a lot of people off. So maybe you're right. It's a trap mother effer. Uh, even the inclusion of the effer word, um, I don't know, would have made it a little bit more p PC for uh, today's audience. He says, could it have been more clear? Sure, even Roundhead Ryan Johnson has admitted that. Uh, does it severely damage the film or make her a bad character? No, that's not what makes her a bad character. What makes her a bad character is that Laura Dern was woefully miscast in a Star Wars role in which she did not belong. Laura Dern probably is not a Star Wars fan. Uh, one can tell that she was not taking her role seriously by the fact that you can see her visibly mouthing the words pew pew as she fires her laser gun. This is absolutely ridiculous. You don't say pew pew when you're shooting your blaster. You don't, not unless you're three years old or you're someone's big sister that stole your Han Solo uh, blaster and hasn't figured out that, you know, it makes the noise, it's the batteries, are, you don't have to go pew pew and you... you all right, I'm working through some stuff here. I had a big sister, and I did have the Han Solo blaster. Well, moving on, moving on. Uh, the script has a lot less flaws than those also enjoyable movies, but films are rarely perfect, uh, especially genre films. You know what? My documentary, SJW Star Wars Scandal Part 4, will be perfect. Eat that. He says, I believe I he acknowledged it on Twitter a while back. I cannot recall Ryan Johnson ever acknowledging that uh, Last Jedi was anything but perfect. In fact, when asked... If uh, if he acknowledged or agreed with any of the criticisms the fans had levied uh, against The Last Jedi, he said, ha, nah, nah. And he said it just like that. He said, ha, nah. 
uh, in a way that made you, made you want to smack him. To be honest with you, now, I'm not. I'm you know I, I find violence abhorrent. But if somebody says, nah, uh, then I y- you know what I mean. Do what you got to do. Uh, he says, uh, I don't agree. Uh, there are plenty of experienced directors. There's some conversation happening in between this, but it's it's even more boring. Uh, that struggle far more than Ryan did. Even George struggled. Blah blah blah. Uh, and then he says, uh, in regards to somebody brings up uh, the fact um, that uh, who was it? Dun, 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 Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott wanted to do a Star Wars film, so he says, "I love the guy, but he's made plenty of stinkers." Exodus, a good year, far from masterful experiences and everything. And then he says, "The Last Jedi is ninety-one percent on Rotten Tomatoes." Not saying that's the be-all end-all. Blah blah blah. Still defending the Last Jedi. These people will defend this movie uh, until uh, time immemorial. Uh, more stuff, more stuff, and then look at this. This is the big tweet right here. <sighs> this is what everyone's talking about right now. To be clear, I don't make these decisions. I barely work on the film. I provide occasional notes that they may or may not need or heed. And the first draft of The Last Jedi was written before The Force Awakens, so it had nothing to do with fan reaction. Holy God. Holy God, is that an amazing revelation. Is that an amazing... We all thought, everyone thought, everyone assumed, uh, given the the way things work, that, you know, of course, The Force Awakens was written first, and then somewhere along the way, like in a separate room, uh, you know, a padded room, hopefully, uh, you know, Ryan Johnson hammered away on a typewriter, a manual typewriter, producing, excreting the script for uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Uh, Under no circumstances did anyone, I think, suspect uh, that The Last Jedi was actually the the Rosetta Stone for this whole trilogy. That is a shocking, shocking revelation from Matt Martin here. Uh, This is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, He says, but uh, if we had made... In an Empire Strikes Back Redux, it would have been a huge step back. Uh, he says, people are critical. Everyone is trying to do their best. It's a huge uh, corporate machines garbage here. And everyone's heart is in the right place. Not, I don't know about that. Uh, and no one is ignorant to how people will react to certain choices. This is absolutely astonishing news. Let, let me just, let me, when Ryan Johnson talks about subverting expectations, he wasn't subverting expectations from the standpoint of, of, of following up J.J. Abrams' movie. J.J. Abrams was desperately trying to justify The Last Jedi. That's what's astonishing about this. The Force Awakens happened in order to justify or lead into The Last Jedi, which was already written. This is an incredibly astonishing piece of information. I can't tell you how this is going to shake Star Wars fandom and how this changes the perception of everything that's going on over at that loony bin called Disney Lucasfilm. The fact that Ryan Johnson subverted not the expectations of people following J.J. Abrams' movie, but subverted the expectations, so to speak, quote-unquote, meaning crushingly disappointed and destroyed us from the very word go. The last reference he had for anything was Star Wars Return of the Jedi. That's the last reference that he had to work from, and he absolutely crushed it from there. Absolutely went, F all of this, all of this. Screw it all. Uh, I, I, We all wondered. I mean, people wondered why. You know, why uh, Han Solo, Princess Leia, and, uh, and Luke Skywalker didn't even get screen time together in The Force Awakens. It turns out that wasn't J.J. Abrams' uh, fault. Uh, the fact that the the Beatles, quote unquote, didn't reunite when Disney had the chance to do so was not J.J. Abrams' fault. It was actually Ryan Johnson's fault. Uh, Ryan Johnson had Luke Skywalker on another, a whole other world, uh, alone, it, you know, isolated, hidden from the very start, the very first page that he wrote. And by the way, uh, that's why. You know, Rose Tico didn't appear in, epi- in, in episode seven. Right? Maybe that was something that could have been. I mean, JJ probably could have. The the whole thing is JJ could have taken any of those characters and put them in the Force Awakens as well, and he chose not to. Every single way that you look at this, new surprises uh, come forward. What the hell was um? 
what what the hell was J.J. Abrams complaining about through Simon Pegg about uh, the lineage of Rey? That apparently that was already, or was that changed in a final? There's so much to unpack here. It is absolutely incredible. But I want you to just focus on this and think about this. The first draft of The Last Jedi was written before The Force Awakens. So it had nothing to do with fan reaction. It was just about Ryan Johnson's desire to utterly destroy Star Wars from the very start. And J.J. Abrams just trying to keep up with him. Just trying to just trying to save things. Just trying to make things work. Well, it didn't work. Oh my God, screw you, Lucasfilm. Hey, want to follow me on Twitter? Okay, cool. I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. Talk to you there. Show your friends you support independent comics while showing the world who you back in the fight against the swarm with the brand new Cyberfrog t-shirt from Crypto Fashion and Comic Artist Pro Secret. Sizes come in small to 5XL and take your choice of colors between navy blue, white, and black. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and order the Phantom Menace, Go Get Daddy's Belt, Tico, and Soilo t-shirts as well. Link is below in the description. You're going to look great. People love these shirts. They fit wonderfully. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video and want to become part of this community, subscribe to this channel by clicking the Laughing Man Face logo right on your screen. Ring the bell for notifications as well. You'll never miss a live chat. And stay tuned, another video by Comic Artist Pro Secrets is coming right up.